Hi everyone, this is Sherry Clark, and welcome to Courage to be Seen. This show's for anyone who longs to take charge of their life, to create more success, accomplish their dreams, and to live in inspiring ways to be powerfully visible and visibly powerful. I'll be sharing stories with you from my own career and experiences, from leading engineering teams for the last 20 years, and also from interactions I have been blessed to have with people I've met from around the world. I want to give you the tools, techniques, strategies, and inspiration so you can be the best you. You can achieve the success you desire, personally and professionally. Being authentic, confident, and empowered are the keys to success and the life that you want. You can have the courage to be seen. Have you ever tried to record a video? Maybe something like five minutes long. And as soon as the red light, you know, show and record starts, you just like forget everything that you're going to say. You just freeze up. Or maybe it takes you like 30 tries. You know, you start and then, ah, I messed up. Let me start again. And you start over and over again. And finally, finally, you have something that you think is, is maybe good enough, but you probably really don't like it that long. I can say I used to have a lot of trouble speaking on on video. I'd be asked at work to record, you know, short little videos to send messages to to people, um, you know, in our business at at different locations, or maybe to to share my take on a new initiative that we're rolling out that's going to be emailed out. And I just struggled. As soon as that camera, you know, went on that record light, it's like I just I couldn't talk. And I'd even try to like write out words and put them close to the camera. And of course that doesn't work because people can see that you're, you're reading it and, and your eyes are following the text and, and the video is uh, still, still not very good. And it doesn't matter if you're trying to record video for things like social media. You know, so many people make it seem so easy. They, they record videos and you're like, I just wish I could look as comfortable on camera as they do. Or you're trying to, to join a um, video for work. It could be like Zoom or we use Teams at work, uh, Skype, WebEx. It doesn't really matter what the technology is. But so many people are uncomfortable with, with going on, on video. And you probably just wish, you know, you could have the courage to be seen. And that's our topic for today. I'm Sherry Clark, and this is the Courage to Be Seen podcast that – I give you the tools and the techniques. I want to share you stories and strategies so you can have the success that you desire in your life. And being able to speak on video in a confident manner is a skill that you need to, to work on in today's virtual world. That's what everyone is, is doing. We're spending so much more time at home and away from people and speaking on video. And so many people are trying to hide that. They want to leave their webcams off. They, they just don't feel confident showing up on video. And so why does this matter? When you think about video, it allows us to connect in a very different way than we can just on phone. I've been surprised, actually, and quite amazed at the connections that I have you know, made around the world or across the country with people that I've actually never met in person, all through speaking on video. And you can't do that by just phone calls. You know, you could have a weekly phone call and yes, you get to know a person, but if you have a weekly video session with somebody, you can really get to know them. It's almost like, you know, you've got to to see them. And so video is just such an enabler and such a a big part of our lives that you have to get comfortable uh, speaking on, on video. Public speaking is the number one fear of most people. And when you add in video, it just makes it that much worse. In fact, 75% of people say they have speaking anxiety. You know, three out of four people, that is a lot. And that's not talking about, that's just speaking. That has nothing to do with video. It's even, it's even worse. In fact, most people I know wish that there weren't webcams on, on their laptops. They wish it wasn't so easy to be on, on video. They just hate to be on, on video. But this fear of public speaking can actually hurt your wages, they say by 10%. So it's something that you really want to, from a work standpoint, get comfortable speaking, get comfortable speaking on video. I've always said to all my people that I mentor and I coach that 
that speaking and your communication skills are so critically important. It's something that you can work on forever because you can never really be good enough. You can always get to be um, a little bit better communicator. So I always emphasize that. And then now when we throw in video, it's just another skill that we, we have to work on. But what most people don't want to hear is actually your, your content is a lot less important than your delivery. In fact, for the opinion that people are going to make of you, they only spend 7% on your content. You spend so much effort into what you're going to say and practicing that, but you really only get credit 7% on the content. 38% is your voice and 55% is your nonverbal communication. So if you're on the phone, maybe you don't have to worry so much about that nonverbal communication, but when you're on video, that nonverbal communication is just as important as it would be as if you're in person. And so the last statistic you know, that, that I want to, to give you and leave you with is that you're 15% less likely to be promoted to a management position if you struggle with, with public speaking and communication. It's so important. 10% loss in wages, 15% less likely to be promoted. These are statistics that, you know, that I found just to help emphasize how important it is for you to be able to speak and be confident on camera. But why is it so hard? There's actually scientific reasons why it's difficult for us to, to speak on camera. The first of it is we're used to seeing ourselves in a mirror. And so we actually see a reflection of ourselves. We don't really see ourselves, right? And, but we see it so often, that's like the preferred image that we would like to see. If somehow you could have a magic mirror so you didn't see your mirror image, you saw the same image everyone else did. So that way you got used to seeing it we'd actually like our pictures better. In fact, you would rather see the yourself in a mirror than a picture, even after that picture has been kind of doctored up and, and Photoshopped to, to look a little bit better, maybe your skin a little bit softer, or a few wrinkles gone. But statistically, people actually would rather see the mirror image of, of themselves. <coughs> the other problem is, lenses on, on cameras, because they're taking a 3D image and making it into two dimensions, um, they can distort certain um, features in your face. And so sometimes the picture isn't as good, especially if maybe if it's a cheap um, phone camera. And granted, the cameras on phones are getting better and better, but you, you just can't have uh, as good as picture when you're trying to take something that is 3D and make it into, into 2D. So a lot of times the pictures aren't as good. The other problem that you have with video, in addition to seeing yourself, you hear yourself. And we're not used to listening to ourselves, right? We hear ourselves a version, um, part of it through our mouth and, and some of the sound goes through actually like your bones, some comes through the air into your ears. And that's the version of sound that we hear. But when you actually have a recording of yourself, you're like, ah, that doesn't even sound like me. Unless you hear yourself on being recorded a lot, you're not going to think that that instantly is you. So now you have an image that you really don't like because you'd rather see the mirror image. And then you have sound that doesn't really sound like you. It's no surprise that we don't uh, like the videos that we produce. But I want to give you a story on an experiment they did just to show how important video is. And this will help you know, reinforce why we need to work on our skills and recording a video. But they did a virtual reality experiment. So they, they placed a person in a room. Well, they did a bunch of people. They placed them in a room one at a time. And they actually did a recording of somebody like rubbing someone's back a little bit, right? And they're sitting there and they're rubbing their back. And then they showed them this recording but what they did is they, they doctored the, the recording. They actually moved the person, you know, into, in the, in the video, into a different spot inside of the room. And then they played this recording for the person. And then they blindfolded the person and put them back in the room and told them, just by feel, go back to where you were initially when you had your back rubbed. And for the people that in the video, they doctored the video and they moved it. They actually had trouble going back to their original spot. Like in their mind, they were trying to like, wait, 
the video said I was over here, even though they knew they might have been someplace place different. But that just goes to show you the power of video. And it is, like I said, it's a skill that, that you really want to, to overcome if you're having issues, you know, being fearful, turning that webcam on. We want to get to the point where you're the one encouraging others to have your webcam on. We want you to have the confidence to be seen. So I'm going to go over some, some tools and techniques that you can practice so you can have more confidence on, on video. And one thing I want you to remember is the average person only has an eight second attention span. So especially if you're recording videos that you want to put on like social media or a video blog or to share, you know, what you say initially is so critically important. So keep that in mind. You want to capture someone's attention early on, or they're not even going to watch the rest of the video that you put so much effort into. Now, this is still important at work. Like if you're giving a presentation at work or you're answering a question uh, in a meeting that, yeah, you might get a little bit more than eight seconds because you're supposed, people are supposed to listen to you or you'll have a little bit more time than that. But it's still important to capture people's attention. I mean, I've noticed being sometimes in meetings when you present, you know, that people are distracted and they're working on something. And then if you talk in a way that you capture their attention, they put their pens down. They look away from their computer. They're looking at you. They, they, they're trying to figure out, you know, hey, what are you, what are you saying? And so, so it is important when you think about whatever you're going to be speaking, video or a phone, you want to capture people's attention, you know, right away. So just keep that in mind as we, as we go forward. So the first step that I'm going to, uh, you know, give you a tool or technique to be more confident on camera is to remember that you need to be yourself. Don't try to be someone else. You know, I have to admit, I'm not really a very funny person. And if I came on camera and I tried to be extra funny, thinking that's what people wanted to see, it would not come off very natural or authentic. You, you have to be yourself. That doesn't mean that you can't work on things and, and come off and make better videos. That's not what I'm saying. But don't try to be somewhere else just so you have better videos. The second thing to keep in mind is, you know, almost every TV show or movie anymore has a blooper reel. We all make mistakes. Sometimes the blooper reel is the best part of a movie. And so you're going to have a, if you're making enough videos, you're going to have a blooper reel too. And that's okay. It's okay to make mistakes. It is okay to, to make and take second shots. Sometimes videos need a little bit of, uh, you know, fixing up uh, or, or retakes. And, and, and that's all right, too. Not all videos have to be taken in, in one, um, one shot. But just know, you, you don't even have to retake if you have a small error. It, people expect it. They expect that you're going to stumble once in a while on, on a word. You can just keep going. Not, it does not have to be be perfect. Okay, so the next step, if you want to be confident on video, is in advance, take care of the things that you can. You know, things like, let's start with physical appearance, like clothing, hair, makeup. Um, think about it in advance, you know, what you're going to wear for your video, what you, your hair, your makeup. And that doesn't mean there's only one thing that you should do. I can't tell you what your video should be. It should be appropriate for the video that you're doing. If you're doing a work meeting and you're going to attend it from home on the webcam, I would say dress as if you were going to be attending that meeting in a conference room. You shouldn't wear your pajamas. You should wear appropriate clothes that you would wear, wear for work. But that doesn't always mean all videos, you know, to be confident, you have to be dressed up. So if you're, uh, if you're watching this video on, uh, if you're listening to it on, on your, your favorite, uh, you know, podcast, um, you won't see this. But if you're watching the video on Facebook or on YouTube, you'll see that today, I normally dress up actually for, for these shows because that's what I wear for work. I'm, I'm, I'm normally dressed up. But today I thought I'd wear just a simple black T-shirt, kind of to make a point of it doesn't necessarily matter. It's not like, oh, I have to have a blazer on and now I can look like I'm confident in the video. You want to look appropriate for, for what you're doing. You want to be clean and neat, but you want to um, just make sure it, it matches your topic. If I was going to do a video on working out, some kind of physical exercise, 
then it'd be appropriate that I was wearing, you know, clothes to go to the gym. It actually would be inappropriate to have, you know, perfect makeup and hair. It'd almost be better if I did some running and maybe got a little sweaty before you did a workout video, right? So, so make sure whatever you do, it's appropriate to your video, but plan it in advance. What you don't want is you never took, got up in the morning and, and took a shower and you are in that meeting at work and, and everyone's like, oh, turn your uh, webcams on. You know, ah, I didn't even get dressed this morning. I don't want to have my webcam on. So, so take care of those in advance, you know, plan for things like if you're going to be on video, you know, what clothing, what, uh, what hair, makeup, you know, just that physical stamp. Plan it in advance so it's one less thing they have to worry about. And be confident with it. You know, wear clothes that make you feel good. Wear clothes that uh, maybe um, the color schemes are, are good for your camera. You don't want to have a lot of wild and crazy patterns if you have um, a background that can't support that. You know, if we have a solid background, you might be able to get away with it. But but just be smart. You know, don't be distracting with, with what you wear to the message that you're trying to portray in the video. And if you plan all that in advance, then that's one less thing that you have to be thinking about while you're trying to do your video. The next thing is your background. And I think this is actually the biggest reason why most people don't want to turn their webcams on in meetings is that their house is messy or they just don't have a good place to have their computer at, at work or to do their work. Like if they're at the kitchen table, they're like, I really just don't want people to see my living room or my kitchen in, in the video. Now, luckily, uh, these days, things like Teams and Zoom, they actually can change out your background automatically for you. You can also use things like green screens, or if you plan in advance, you know, make sure that uh, the, video, the background that you have in your video is appropriate. And then once that's taken care of, it's just one less thing that you have to be worried about while you're doing your video um, and, or doing your presentation you know, on screen. And then the, the the last part of the kind of things you can take care of in advance would be just the technology itself, your camera, your microphone, lighting. Lighting's a big one. And the angles of, the, of your camera, do you look the way that you want? If it's too dark or uh, if the camera's at a funny angle, you know, you're not going to take a good video. So, so practice and plan these things out in advance. Um, with, your, with your laptop, if you're using the webcam, Maybe the camera's too low and you have to move the whole laptop and put it up on, on like a riser or something so you can have the, the camera at a better, better angle for yourself. So, so plan all that in advance, practice it with if you need, then that way when you're actually doing the recording or you're in that meeting, it's just one less thing that you have to worry about. The next step is make sure you're ready with what you're gonna say. You know, if you need to research your topic, if it's uh, some, a presentation at work, know what you're gonna say in advance. You can do an outline, you can do notes. There's a lot of different ways that you can kind of plan out your whatever you're gonna present, but make sure you, you do that. Now, some people like teleprompters when they're doing video. I don't use one, and so I can't really give you any, uh, in, any suggestions on if they're good or not, but you can have where, It'll play the words, you know, um, on a phone or on your computer screen while you're recording the video. And so that's something that you want to try out. You can. Uh, I like to do more of an outline. And that way I have some prompts of what I want to talk about. But I don't actually, you know, I'm not worried about reading word for word from a script. You don't want to read. You want to be more natural on, on video. So if you can, try to transition to using more of an outline and some notes rather than a word for word script when you're presenting. And the best way to do that is you need to practice. You wanna practice, practice, practice. If you're given a, a talk, like a, a talk that you're gonna do multiple times, it you wanna just keep practicing it over and over again. An important meeting, you know, I prepare what I say in advance and I practice it. The more you practice it, the more natural it will be, the easier it will be to, to record what you're going to say on, on video. With that, you know, we talked about how you're used to seeing a mirror image of yourself when you look in the mirror. So if what, when you see that yourself on video and some people get really distracted because uh, most of the 
software out there, you can see at least a small version of yourself. So you can see how you're showing up on camera. And if you're bothered by that, how you look, I would suggest take a lot of pictures of yourself and review them. Get used to looking at yourself in that non mirror image in the way that everyone else sees you. And the more you see yourself and you feel natural looking at yourself in that way, then the less likely when you're actually, you know, in that meeting, you're not going to go, oh, I just look awful in this picture. I don't I don't want to see myself. And then it distracts from the message that you're trying to get. That's the main thing. Most of these tools and techniques are they're about positioning yourself to be most successful. And so take pictures, look at the pictures, get used to seeing yourself uh, in that non mirror image, just like everyone else does. And so that way, when you see yourself on video, it, uh, your brain will be more used to, to seeing it. And with that, when you're practicing, I would record yourself and listen to yourself talk. That way, that's not a surprise either. You won't be so worried about, oh, that doesn't even sound like me. No, it does sound like you. You just aren't used to hearing yourself. And so, so practice, record yourself, listen to it, watch it. The more you do that, the more when you're actually taking video, it, uh, it'll, it'll just look that much better. The next uh, tool that you really want to pay attention to is, let's just say, let's call it your physical presence on camera. It starts with your posture. So you want to make sure you sit sit up, you have your shoulders back, you know, your head head is straight, and have that confident posture when you're when you're on camera. If you're slouching, you're going to sound like you're slouching. Some people like to stand when they're presenting. Some people like to sit. I think you can do either. Just make sure that you have have good posture when you're doing it. It might not seem like or be obvious, but you want to have good posture even with your legs and your feet. If you're doing crazy things with your lower body, even though it's not on camera, it actually does affect your overall posture. So, so I would make sure that you, you have good posture and you're sitting upright. Um, and that way it'll portray more confidence when you're, when you're on camera. When you're watching your videos, look for like nervous ticks that you might do. I used to have one, um, I would play with my bracelet. And a lot of times I would do it off camera. Many times people couldn't, couldn't see it. Um, but sometimes you'd give like little sounds. And, uh, you know, it's something I had to, to get over and, and not do. Um, now if I can wear a bracelet and I, I don't, you know, over and over again play with it. But I, I would catch myself initially doing that. You might have a, a tick that you, you move your hand a certain way or you're always, you're repetitively doing one thing. Sometimes people like lean their head to one side and they don't, they don't realize, realize that. So what I would say is just watch your video and critique yourself and you're not going to fix them all like overnight, but, but focus on it. And over time you can practice and those, those nervous ticks can go away because you become more uh, aware of them. Now using body language, to be more confident on camera. You do want to use some hand gestures, but just be careful with them because hand gestures on video actually can look kind of strange. Some of it is the depth perception based on when your can where your camera is to, to where your hands are. But if you never move your hands at all when you're when you're talking, you can come off pretty cold. So the suggestion is use your hands to make a point. Just be careful that you don't use your hands over and over again in the exact same kind of repetitive motion. And that, that's where it starts to become annoying and, and starts looking crazy on video. But to move your hands what, you know, once in a while or use your hands to, to help drive a point on video, just like you would in person, can be very, very useful. You also want to be careful if you have um, a prop. If you have something that you're in your hand and people can see that on video, Make sure it makes sense. Like if you're talking about water or hydrating and you have a glass of water, okay, that might that might make sense. But you don't want to bring something onto video, some kind of prop that you're holding just to keep your hands busy, but it really doesn't add to your message or doesn't make sense to, to have, have with you. The next step is make sure you know where you're looking uh, when you're making a video. So the best thing to do is look right at, at the camera. That way people know like they're looking at you when, when they're watching you. Um, 
what most people do is they look on their computer screen. And if I have a video down here, this would be the natural place that I'd want to look because it'd be like I'm having a conversation with who is ever on, on screen. Now, granted, it's difficult to look at the camera. Most people have a real hard time with it. If, if you're one of those people that have a hard time with that, they say, look like two inches above the camera. And that's a good place versus most people are looking down at the computer screen. If you look right above the camera, then you don't have, um, it's not like you're staring at the camera and it's a little bit easier. They even say you could try to, to tape like eyes, like googly eyes on your webcam. That way it's more like you're looking at a face and that can be easier than looking just at a plain, plain camera. One suggestion, which I've never actually tried, but it actually sounds kind of interesting, is to put a mirror behind your webcam. That way you get feedback on your posture, you're, you're looking and getting the same kind of feedback that you are with the, the camera um, on the screen, the, the picture. So you could try that. Like I said, I, I haven't tried it, but it is a, an interesting thing to try. Before you actually start a video, it's good to relax. You know, maybe do a little meditation or yoga. Um, just make sure you're in a good, good spot. Um, you can drink some water. And then right before you, you do your video, it's good to get your energy up. You want to stand kind of in a power pose and, and have that confidence. Maybe do a couple of jumping jacks or, or air squats and get your heart rate up a little bit because you said you, you have eight seconds to, to grab someone's attention. So you want to start the video, you know, powerful. So you could move around a, a little bit. Don't forget to smile when you're when you're doing a video that uh, it's easy to, to get wrapped up in the message. And especially if you're doing it by yourself in a room and there's not energy to feed on, it's easy to forget to smile. So just relax a little bit, make sure you smile and, uh, and know that you're ahead of most people just because you're, you're trying to do a video. You know, a lot of people just aren't even willing to take that step and try. So you have to practice. I've been doing videos uh, at work. I do a lot to send out to my team. When I do those quick update videos, I just open my laptop, I record three to five minutes, I save it and I send it out to the team. I don't even edit it. I don't do retakes. Um, that's great practice to get into. It gets you actually forgetting almost that you can always stop it and start again. And the more you do it, the more confident you become, the easier it is. I hope some of these steps, uh, you know, will allow you to have the confidence that you want to have on, on camera because it is a skill set you can practice. It's not something that, oh, some people are good on camera and some people aren't. It's something that has to be practiced. And, you know, only we can be ourselves by embracing, um, who we are. You know, I've, I've had to work to have the courage to be seen and doing that, I've transformed my life. The more courage I have, the more I embrace who I am, the, the more my life has uh, just opened up and, and it's been so much more enjoyable. And I'm hoping to share that with you so you can have the success that you want in, in your life. I invite you to check out my website, courage to be seen.com. There you can find out more about me and my, my coaching program. I also invite you to follow me on Facebook or Instagram. I share daily uh, motivational messages there. And uh, if you like this uh, podcast, then make sure you subscribe. So that way you can uh, get updates uh, when the next one comes out. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've been inspired to take action on at least one thing starting today. To learn more, check out courage to be seen.com. There you'll find my blog and additional resources, including you can download a copy of 10 ways to live a more courageous life. Thanks again for listening and make sure you tune in next time to learn additional ways to have the courage to be seen in your own life. Views expressed on this program are those of the host, guests, and callers, and do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its management, or advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio.